Beer undecided. You sure have a humdinger of a problem. Morning, sir. My advice to you is... Oh, dang, this blasted machine. Morning, Sam. Oh, morning, Kate. I'll be with you in a minute. Oh, that's all right. I can help myself. My advice to you is stop seeing the poor, young, hard-working, good-looking fella and start going out for the ugly old rich gink. <laughs> Remember, money cannot buy happiness, but it can sure make misery a lot more enjoyable. <laughs> This isn't any of my business, but you're not writing that advice to your nice little niece. Oh, no, no, no. This is a new column for the newspaper. Oh. Yeah, I, I needed something to boost the World Guardian circulation. Well, last month we were clear up to 82 copies, and this month we're down to 43. Well, what's the reason for that? Well, for one thing, I stopped printing Happy Hooligan on the comic page. <laughs> that would do it. Now, now, let's see. Dear Minerva, I am desperate. Who's Minerva? Me. <laughs> Who does your hair, Minerva? Oh, wow, Kate, I'm up against a deadline with this column. Oh, you women newspaper men are sure touchy. <laughs> Dear Minerva, I am desperate. My well has run dry, the bank is foreclosing the mortgage on my farm, the locusts have eaten my barn, and my horse has hay fever. What shall I do? Signed, Wits End. <laughs> Dear Wits End. Have no fear. Your problem has a simple solution. Simple <laughs> solution? Just burn down the farmhouse, collect the insurance, and take off for South America. <laughs> Sam, what kind of advice is that? What's wrong with it? But you just can't tell somebody to burn down their property and run away. I can't. <laughs> what other outlandish advice have you been given to these poor souls? Well, now, here's one that's really got me stumped. This one is from Lonely. She writes, I am a widow with nothing in the world but three million dollars. Can you help me find a man who needs me as much as I need him? Lonely? Meet wit's end. <laughs> well, I'll be doggone. Why didn't I think of that? Well, because, Minerva, you're not a woman. Well, what's that got to do with it? Because women are sensitive about things like that. And when you get right down to it, they're practical. Uh, you mean a woman should write the Dear Minerva column? Of course. That's what I've been hoping you'd say. <laughs> and meet Minerva. Me? <laughs> oh, just a second. I can't give advice. You just did. But you're perfect for the job. I don't know why I didn't think of you before. Oh, no, Sam, I'm too busy. I got my three girls. I got the hotel to run. That's just it. You've been solving people's problems for years. Just being you. Oh, Sam, stop and think about it. The, the folks in this valley aren't going to send their personal problems to Kate Bradley. Well, it could be our secret. You could type the column at the hotel and bring it down here, and nobody would never know who Minerva is. I, I, I just don't have time running back and forth delivering columns. We could get somebody else to bring it. Then it won't be a secret. Well, it would if we could get somebody who wouldn't talk. There isn't such a person in this valley. <laughs> yes, there is. Who? Him. <laughs> How about it, boy? You want to get in a newspaper game? Hi, Mom. I thought you were taking a bath. I forgot my towel. Oh, what are you doing for my typewriter? What typewriter? The one in your hands. Oh! Oh, 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 that typewriter. I was going to take it down to the kitchen and dust it. Your Z's are awful fuzzy. Oh, I just cleaned it yesterday. Well, you know how Z's are. They're just dust collectors. <laughs> They're even worse than B's or X's. Or were you going to be late for your date? I didn't have a date tonight. You don't? No, I'm going to bed early. Oh, fine. Well, then you won't want a noisy typewriter in your room. <laughs> <laughs> that upstairs? I'm not going upstairs. You're not? Well, you're facing. Well, just because a person is facing doesn't mean that they're going. <laughs> Mom, are you all right? Look, why don't you go and do your homework? Well, I don't feel like doing it. I've got something more important to do. Like what? 
Well, I've got to write out the batting order for the Hooterville Hawks for tomorrow's game. Homework is more important than batting orders. Well, I need the typewriter for my homework. Like I was saying, <laughs> batting orders are more important than homework. <laughs> Mom, are you serious? Now, would you get going before I change my mind? <laughs> You ought to have somebody help you carry that heavy machine. I don't need any help. Of course you do. Girls! <laughs> I don't mind. I can manage without the girls. Where are you going with that? To the kitchen. What are you going to do with it? Why is everybody so nosy? <laughs> I am in love with a shoe salesman who doesn't know I'm alive. Every day I buy a pair of shoes just so he'll notice me. Now I have 20 pairs of shoes and he still hasn't given me a tumble. What should I do? Signed, lovesick. <laughs> Dear lovesick, either get another boyfriend or find a centipede who's tired of going barefoot. <laughs> <laughs> After all, this is just my first batch. <laughs> Somebody's coming. <laughs> Hello, Bobby Joe. I thought I heard a typewriter down here. A typewriter? What would I be doing with a typewriter? I heard something clicking. Oh, it, it must have been this. <laughs> I'm uh, knitting a sweat. With an ice pick? It's for cold weather. <laughs> Where's the yarn? Well, anybody can knit with yarn. <laughs> you and your jokes. It was just that old woodpecker again. <laughs> I want to get in the icebox. What for? To make myself a chicken sandwich. Oh, you shouldn't be eating at this time of night? I always eat at this time of night. Been doing it for 20 years. Well, but d didn't you hear the speech the president made about the dangers of inflation? <laughs> I just eat. Whatever happens after that's none of my business. Yeah, but you got 20 years of unfinished business right there. Now, you wind up and go to bed. Yeah, Very bad for you to eat tonight. Have a glass of water. That'll kill you. Good night, Uncle Joe. Good night, dear. <laughs> Well, you dry it somewhere else. It'll dry quick in the oven. Hang it in the bathroom. Well, Mom, you've always told us girls not to hang our personal stuff in the bathroom because of the guests. Will you stop listening to your mother and listen to your mother? <laughs> stop listening to you and listen to you? Well, uh, you can't dry it in the oven, and that's fine. Why don't you want me to open the oven? Have you got something in there? No. <laughs> then why can't I open the door? Because I have a typewriter in there, that's why. <laughs> a typewriter? A, a typewriter. <laughs> oh, Mom, you're too much. <laughs> you're whipping up some sort of surprise, aren't you? Or you might call it that. <laughs> well, whatever it is, it sure smells good. <laughs> to type it over. What a shame. Because now it's a real hot column. <laughs> One 
want you to take this to Hooterville and deliver it to Sam Drucker personally. Understand? And remember, if anybody finds out that I'm Minerva, you're going to be back in Alaska pulling a sled for Nanak of the North. <laughs> is to marry the astronomer. At least you'll know where he is nights. Oh, I don't agree with Minerva. She should have told Miss Undecided to marry the banker. If I were Minerva, I'd have told her to marry a ball player. Wouldn't you, Mom? Mom? Come on. <laughs> Would you prefer the astronomer or the ball player? Well, a little of both. Mom, we're talking about Minerva's column. My nervous what? <laughs> Listen to this. Dear Minerva, I am a hard-working man on my feet from six in the morning till midnight. But my niece is always complaining that I never work enough. Poor guy. I know just how he feels. <laughs> Go ahead, I'll share the rest of it. What can I do about it? Signed, Joe C. <laughs> Mom, did you hear that? <laughs> She's asleep again. Mom? What? Mom, you were asleep. Oh, I was not. Well, yes, you were. I heard every word you said. What did we say? Y you, you said I was asleep. That's what you said. <laughs> I haven't got breakfast started yet. Go on. Nobody's got wise. Hi, fellas. Hi, Sam. Hey, what time's the paper coming out? Yeah, we want to read Minerva's column. If folks will stop pestering me, it'll be out at its regular time. Sam, who is this Minerva, anyhow? Is she from around here? Oh, she's too smart to be from around here. She's got to live in Boston or Philadelphia. You're right about that, Floyd. For once. <laughs> hey, what's he doing here? <laughs> who? The dog. He was back at the Shader Rest when we pulled out. He beat the train in. What's so unusual about that? <laughs> I wonder if Clayton knows he's gone. Maybe we ought to take him back. Oh, no, I wouldn't do that. 
he might have business in town. <laughs> what kind of business would a dog be having in town? If you want to know, ask him. I ain't nosy. Come on, Charlie. We've got to get that crate to the grain store. Ooh, hot ziggity. This ought to boost circulation another five readers. <laughs> Here's a batch for Minerva. your head. Why would she keep it a secret if she were writing a novel? Maybe it's the story of my life. Like, like, like the big day you had the braces taken off of your teeth. <laughs> I've got it. She's carrying on a secret correspondence with a man. It explains everything. Writing at night, going around dead on her feet all day. Like Elizabeth Barrett and Robert Browning. Do they live around here? <laughs> the poet. You know Mom's writing to a poet? <laughs> oh, skip it. I wonder who it could be. Hey there. Sam Drucker speaking. Who'd you say it was, Sarah? What eagle? I don't know any eagles. <laughs> oh, the big city newspaper? Yeah, put him on. It's long distance. <laughs> yeah, th this is the editor of the Hooterville World Guardian. Well, thank you. We think Minerva's column's pretty good, too. <laughs> Do you want to what it? Oh, syndicate. In, in 46 papers. Well, our circulation's almost twice that. <laughs> oh, 46 different papers. <laughs> well, gee, I don't know. I'd have to ask her. Can I call you back? Yes, sir. Thank you, Mr. Haskins. Stick around. I gotta dash off a real special note to Kate. is working out just fine. I've got a proposal to make to you about you know what. I'm so happy for both of us, I could kiss you. Devotedly, Sam Drucker. Wow. 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 What's all the commotion? Uncle Joe, you'll never guess. Hold it. Uncle Joe, you better sit down. <laughs> just sit right down here, Uncle Joe. Make yourself comfortable. That's right. You know how strange Mom's been acting lately? How she's been sneaking my typewriter out of my room and writing all night? And you know who she's been writing to? And who's gonna propose to her? And who can hardly wait to kiss her? Who? Who? Sam Drucker! I better sit down. <laughs> Mr. Drucker's gonna be our father. And he'll be your nephew. Man my age don't want no bald-headed nephew. <laughs> Mr. Drucker in love? Well, why all the secrecy? If I was in love with Sam Drucker, I'd sure keep it a secret. <laughs> and send him notes back and forth by the dog. Why don't they just come right I out? I know. Maybe she thinks we wouldn't approve. There must be some reason why they're hiding it from everybody. What could it be? Well, she couldn't be worried about one of us. We're all grown up. <laughs> There's only one way to find out about this. Ask the one person who can give us the answer. Dear Minerva! <laughs> and so now 
we understand why our mother has been so cranky with us and is always tired and run down. It's not right for us girls to stand in her way to marry the man she loves. <laughs> That's a real knee slapper, Kate. Imagine the girls thinking you and me are planning no, to get... No, no, Sam, it isn't funny. You know, while Minerva is being a big shot in print, Kate Bradley has been tired and worn out, run down and cranky. I didn't realize I'd been neglecting the girls. Yeah, but think of what it'll mean to have your column syndicated. You'll be a celebrity. Why, people will be after you for autographs, there'll be parties, you'll be making speeches. Sam? I'm about to make one now. This is what I call a real dinner for a chain. A little more of that white meat. Mm. And a dark. <laughs> Not to um, mention dressing? Yeah, a little of that, too. And more mashed potatoes, Uncle Joe? Uh-huh. And not too easy on the gravy. That's right. And some more biscuits and strawberry jam, huh, Uncle Joe? Notice how I'm cutting down? Oh, yes, yes, I have. Uh, I believe that that's the smallest fourth helping I have ever seen you take. <laughs> Girls, don't you think we ought to wait till after dinner? Hmm? Well, we just want to take a peek. Is it in? Is it in? It's here. The letter from Worried Sisters. Read Minerva's answer. Dear Worried Sisters and all my nice readers. Oh, this is terrible. Oh, no. What is it? She can't. She just can't. She can't what? Betty Joe, either read it or give it to me. I can't. <clears throat> Dear worried sisters and all my nice readers, this is my last column. Um, before I say goodbye, I'd like to tell the worried sisters, stop worrying. Your mother doesn't sound like the type to carry on a secret romance. If she wanted to marry her old friend, the storekeeper, you'd be the first to hear about it. Yeah. You know, that Minerva sure is wise. I guess it's because she's so old. <laughs> Why is she giving up the column? Oh, well, <clears throat> Minerva says, um, my readers have helped me more than I have ever helped them. And if there's anybody who really needs to follow Minerva's advice, it's yours truly, Minerva. Did you hear that, Uncle Joe? Minerva isn't going to write her column anymore. That's no loss. You know who could write a better column than that Minerva woman? Who? Your mother. <laughs> Junction. This has been a Filmways presentation.